Uh, welcome to the Forward Conservation Commission meeting being held at a uh, public hearing on Monday, December 5th, 2022 at 530 in the first floor hearing room. One Government Center Fall River to consider the following petitions listed in this notice. Uh, pursuant to the open meeting laws, any person Hello. any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Things are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. We'll start with roll call. Chris, we'll start at your end. Chris Boyle here. Here. James Winsby. John Brandt. Louis Ferrero. Jim Kizik. Paul Arnold. All members are here. We also have uh, Dan Aguiar, engineer with the city. Patty Aguiar, recording uh, secretary, clerk. And uh, for Forward TV, we have Gary Letts. Uh, first on old business, uh, request for a certificate of compliance SE-24-768 owner applicant is Highland Farms Development 2 LLC. Project location is 48 Brookfield Terrace. Assessor's map is U-04-0062, filed by Highland Farms Development 2 LLC applicant requesting a certificate of compliance at the time of inspection. All work regulated by order conditions have been satisfactorily completed. This was continued from our November 7, 2022 meeting. This one, I think uh, all the work looks completed. Yeah, I don't that. know if there's anybody here with regards to it, but yes, this uh, for 768, all the work's been, been done in accordance with the order, so I recommend the issuance of the certificate of compliance. Okay, so can I have a motion to grant a certificate of compliance? Motion to uh, grant CLC. Seconded. Seconded. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Next on the agenda is a request for a certificate of compliance SE-24-769. Owner applicant is Highland Farms Development 2 LLC. Project location 30 Brookfield Terrace. Assessor's map is U-04-0063. Filed by Highland Farms Development 2 LLC. Applicant requested a certificate of compliance at the time of inspection or work regulated by the order of conditions have been satisfactorily completed. Uh, this has been continued from November 7th meeting. So the last action taken um, was a letter was sent out at the request of the board regarding some outstanding activities that were taking place. I've spoken to the owner and to the engineer that she has hired, so they are putting together a filing for the swimming pool and the remaining work that has been done in the backyard. So I would recommend that we still table and give her the time to make the filing. Okay. Now, can you tell us what kind of options she has for continuing? Well. You mean as far as continuing? I mean, so close to the wetlands, I mean, what is? Well, the options are she files a notice of intent. And if the, if the proposed activity is what she's showing falls within the buffer zone and the performance standards are met for the Wetlands Protection Act, then it is a permittable action. Okay. It'll be for the board to determine whether or not the proximity to the wetland is sufficient for meeting those standards. But until you get a plan before you that shows you the pool is 15 feet away from the wetland, Maybe it's a foot away from the well. You don't know until you get a plan before you. Okay. Right. So you're allowing her the ability to put together that file. Okay. So can I have a motion to table this to January 9th? Motion to January table. January 9th? Second. Uh, roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Next is a request for a certificate of compliance SE 24 739. Um, owner African is CML2 LLC. <coughs> Project location 507 Alden Street. Assessor's map is J-21-0001 and 005. Applicant request for certificate of compliance. Sitting all work regulated by the order of conditions have been satisfactorily completed. This was tabled uh, from November 7th meeting. So the same thing, a letter went out at, at your direction. I've spoken with the owner. This is for the, um, the mill complex yeah. down over on Alden Street. So there were a few items that they needed to address. I spoke with the owner. They are working on that. They'll submit as a revised plan. So the matter should be tabled until they finish the work. Okay. Can I have a motion to table on January 9th? Motion to table. Second. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Okay. 
Next is a request for a certificate of compliance, SE-24-764. Owner applicant is Highland Farms Development 2, LLC. Project location is 221 Fillstone Lane. Assessor's map is U-04-0058. Applicant requesting a certificate of compliance stating that all work regulated by the order conditions have been satisfactorily completed. So at the last action that was taken at the direction of the board was to file an enforcement order um, with the applicant, which was done. Um, that was on 12-1, well, 12-122 was when I did this report. So it went out probably two or three weeks before that. And the owner uh, I have spoken with, he was in the process of hiring a consultant. I think a number of people in the building have, have spoken to the owner of this one. This is with the, uh, with the large well an alteration. Mm -hmm. Uh, off the end of the cul-de-sac so they're still within the 30-day response time that we had requested in the uh, enforcement action so okay. table the matter for the next hearing so can I, have a, can I have a motion to table till january 9th motion to table roll call vote aye 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 yes okay mm -hmm. Uh, none of you folks are with Highland Farm, are you? Um, uh, I, I can speak to anything that the board or the commission may have a question on. I, I am the engineer of record okay. uh, for those lots. So if there is a specific question, I'd be happy to try and answer it for you. All right, thank you. On that last one, I we have been in contact and have met with the landowner, and we are in the process of putting a notice of intent together for them. Okay, thanks. Uh, next is a request for certificate of compliance, SE-24-765. Owner applicant is Highland Farm Development 2 LLC. Project location is 245 Fieldstone Lane. Assessor's map is U-04-0059. Applicant requesting a certificate of compliance stating all work regulated by orders and conditions have been satisfactorily completed. This is continued from November 7th meeting. There's still a small amount of loam and seating that needs to take place on the west side of the single family dwelling, a little bit to the rear of the property. I have spoken with Gary Michael from Bristol Pacific. They were just finishing that up this week. Should be all set for the next meeting. Okay. So can I have a motion to table this to January 9th? So moved. Set that. Okay, we'll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Next is a request for a certificate of compliance, SE-24-766. Owner African Highland Farms Development 2 LLC. Project location 273 Fieldstone Lane. Assessor's map is U-04-0060. Applicant requesting certificate of compliance stating that all work regulated by orders conditions have been satisfactorily completed. This has been continued since uh, November 7th meeting. All the work has been uh, completed in accordance with the order. I recommend the issue of certificate of compliance. Can I have a motion for a certificate of compliance? Motion to grant COC. Second. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Next is a request for a certificate of compliance, SE-24-767, owner applicant Highland Farms Development 2, LLC, project location 294 Fillstone Lane. This is map is U-04-0061, applicant requesting a certificate of compliance stating all work regulated by order conditions has been satisfactorily completed. This has been continued uh, from November 7th meeting. So the requested letter was sent out. The applicant is still within the required 30-day time to respond. I have spoken uh, with the owner, and they're putting together the appropriate notice of intent for, okay. for the work in the restoration area. Can I have a motion to table of January 9th? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, next, request a certificate of compliance, SE-24-770, owner applicant, Highland Farms Development 2, LLC, project location 14, Brookfield Terrace, assessor's map is U-04-0064, uh, applicant requesting a certificate of compliance stating all work regulated by order conditions has been satisfactorily completed. This was tabled from November 7th. All the work has been completed, and I recommend the issuance of a certificate of compliance. Okay, can I have a motion to uh, uh, issue a certificate of compliance? So Second. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah, 
memorize those numbers in my sleep. <laughs> uh, okay, new business. Uh, NRAD uh, SE 24 809. Owner applicant is Thomas St. Pierre Renewable Solutions LLC. Project location Family Drive, Macon Street. Uh, Systems map is C 13 001 and 002. And you're here for that one? Yes, I am. Okie dokie. Thank you. You know the drill. <laughs> I have my assistant to help me. <laughs> Allison, I didn't see, did you just walk in? I'm going to give you credit for being on the board without the mm -hmm. yes. Uh, for the record, Steve Gioso with Civil and Environmental Consultants. Uh, with me tonight is Allison Caesar, who is also a consultant working on this project with me. Um, this is a piece of property the Commission has seen in the past. Um, it is a altered piece of land located on the east end of Family Drive and on the west side of the ramp onto uh, Route 24. And um, the land is um, primar primarily upland area, but there is a wetland system that borders the site on the south and on the west side. Uh, a couple of pockets of wetlands joined by uh, two 36-inch culverts in two locations. <coughs> and so you can see the uh, wetland resource areas that were delineated by the uh, wetland uh, specialist, uh, highlighted in green on the exhibit, and then You'll see the heavier dash line that sort of parallels the wetland system. That would <coughs> represent the 100-foot uh, wetland buffer zone. And then running through the middle of the site, this area here are the power lines, the main power transmission easement that runs through the property with a gravel access road that uh, begins at the 24 ramp and runs through the property. And there are a couple of culverts in a couple of locations that that car path um, runs over. Um, so again, this is a delineation that had previously been reviewed and approved by the commission a number of years ago. Um, the applicant is not proposing any activity at this time, so this is really just a request to reaffirm the wetland delineation as depicted on the plan, and then um, the applicant will then uh, proceed with his uh, thought process on what might be appropriate uh, to develop uh, on this land. Again, there is no set uh, plan at this time. I know a few years ago we were looking at doing maybe a solar field um, on this land, but again, I'm not sure what uh, Tom's uh, specific goals at this time would be. But So we're looking to get this uh, particular delineation reaffirmed and that would allow him some planning time. This would lock in the line for a three-year time period, as you know, um, and then allow him to uh, proceed with um, looking at the options for possible development of the property. It is filled land. We've done a number of test pits, so you're not looking at natural soils. And if you've been out there, there's a pretty good embankment dropping down to the actual wetland system or along the perimeter. Um, and when you're dealing with altered land, what we typically do is we look at soils um, as well as the vegetation. And in this case, we probably have done 20 test pits throughout the property. Um, and it clearly is filled material that has been placed here historically, probably going back 50, 60 years, if not more. Um, and so we're at the point where, uh, again, Tom would like to establish the limits of jurisdiction so we can think about the future for the property. He's owned the land for a good number of years. I think he told me pretty close to 30 years, I think Tom has actually owned this property. And so we would look to, uh, if you're comfortable with the line, get an approval, and I'm sure we'll be back at some point with a development proposal of some form. So there have been no activity on the property since the last delineation? That's correct? correct. Yes, that's correct. Okay. After the last delineation, we ended up doing the test pits that I just mentioned. Uh, we did speak with a couple of people. We were close on a solar project at one point, and um, that deal fell apart at the last minute. Um, but, um, and that's why he has the name Renewable Solutions, because again, he was looking to uh, use this as a green uh, facility.
facility uh, in this location. We think it's a it's probably not a bad spot for that. Um, but what is renewable solutions? Well, that was a name that Tom came up with to hold the property in, but again, he was thinking along the lines this was a piece of property that was probably best suited for something other than residential development, that it may be the, the solar projects were uh, going, you know, pretty active at the time. He was talking to a few of our clients. We've done a lot of large-scale solar projects in the region, and uh, he was close on one particular developer to come in here and, and do that, but that did not uh, come to fruition. But again, there, there may be other opportunities for the land uh, moving forward. Okay. Is there anyone here to speak on this? Uh, no? Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? Okay. Can John, I if I could just add, um, I looked at the property. Uh, the wetlands rep representation is very similar to what was previously approved by the board. Thank you to the applicant for providing topography uh, on their plan because it does make it a little bit easier to understand the hydrology of what's happening. I would just caution the board um, not to approve flag locations that are not on the subject parcel. You can approve the buffer zone line as shown on this plan that would be off of those wetlands flag numbers, but any wetlands flag specifically not on this parcel of land as they weren't applicant um, to the petition, I just would not approve those flag locations. So if you just want to make that note that you're only approving the actual flag uh, locations that fall on the locus itself. All right. So can I have a motion to get an approval on the flags? Uh, I have a question. Sure. I don't understand the flag. So what you mean by that? So there, when the applicant went out, they looked at the wetlands that surround the property that would right. have an effect on it. Right. So for right. instance, that was there. Yeah. so this wetlands line here, yeah. that's not on the subject parcel. And because this landowner was not an applicant to this petition, <coughs> you cannot determine a wetland on their property. It's almost okay, like taking so their land. At, oh, but okay. what you're doing is all of the wetlands flags, specific flags that are on this parcel, and then the buffer zone, for instance, that showed on this parcel that has to do with the wetlands that are off-site, the buffer zone is what would be locked in place according to this plan. So, okay. so you're approving the buffer zone location, which backed up would be 100 feet to a well. That, that looked reasonable to you. Yes. Yep. Okay, because I, I just was there. I couldn't really. It's a lot, it's a lot to not, look at out there. Um, I'm not as, an engineer. As Mr. Giosa stated, probably 40 years ago, this site was probably devoid of vegetation other than what's in the wetland. Um, the vegetation that's there now is scrub, very you know young growth yep. um, that's come up through this, through this filled area. It is still somewhat accessed by the utility companies, the, the paths that go through the property. Once you get on them, you're okay to traverse, but getting off of those paths is very difficult to do so. Um, yep. so Geo, so what it, type of fill is it? Like U-grade fill? Or just it, there's a mix of materials in there. There's a lot of granular. It's granular. The earthen material is granular earthen material. There's rocks, boulders. It's, it's a mishmash of materials through there. <laughs> I mean, the, the fill was clearly placed prior to the Wetlands Protection Act, um, so, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then, of course, with whatever development they do, I mean, the land has to be suitable for that type of development, right. but that's beyond the scope of the conservation. Okay. Thank you. Can I have a motion for approval of the buffer zone existing and excluding uh, new flags? You have one. You have one, actually. So moved. Second. A roll call vote? Aye. 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 Yes. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Next is an NOI SE-24. Mm -hmm. 809. 809. 809. Uh, 809. I must have put it. So SE-24. 24-809. Owner applicant is Diane Smith. Project location is. Oh no, that one doesn't have no file number yet. yet. Oh okay. The last one was 809. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Uh, okay. All right. Back to two. NOI SE-24. We don't have a complete uh, number on file number. Owner applicant is Diane Smith. Project location four. Captain Circle Assessors Map is Y-06-0037. Filed by Proline Engineer. 
The applicant purpose is to re replace existing septic system with new system. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's fine. Okay, Bob Barabee, ProLine Engineering. With me is Jeff, he's the owner, with, his, with Diane, who's in the back. What we have is an existing parcel with a trailer on it. The trailer. Could you speak the microphone? We have a trailer on the piece of property. It's a two-bedroom trailer. We went out there with the Board of Health, conducted perk tests and soil evaluations on the site to determine where the suitable material was on the site, and that was submitted to the Board of Health. What we're asking for now is the notice of intent filing to install the septic system on the site. There's a well. All the properties out there are served by wells, so no town water available. tight site as you can see on my drawing the flag line is identified in green highlighted in green the portion that half of this area is on our property the other half is on the abutters property there was also some wetland lines across the captain circle that were also located by the botanist who went out there so we picked up everything there's a well on the property which is in the southwest corner of the property I put the 100 foot well radius in there because we try and keep the septic system at least a hundred feet away from the drinking water the trailer is in the southern portion of the property and where I'm proposing to put the septic system where we conducted the soil evaluations is up towards the northern half of the property but that's also where the wetlands are so what I propose to do the, is this site looks like it was probably filled many years ago and then where it drops off that's where the wetlands are and then to the northeast of that is where South Watepa Pond is once you go across the right of ways and through the woods. So we're going to put in, we're proposing to put in a, a two bedroom septic system to match the two bedroom trailer that's out there right now it's close to the wetlands but that was really the only place I could put the septic system and stay <coughs> more than 100 feet from our well and more than 100 feet from the abutters well which is on the property located to the east and you can see the circle for that well also on my plan does the board have any questions Mr. Chairman, I would offer that um, in light of the situation, this is probably the best scenario that, that the applicant could provide. Um, it's six of one, half a dozen of another. Do you want to get closer to the two drinking wells um, or closer to a wetland? And the wetland itself, um, you know, we're in an area that, that's already been altered. This would also be removing an existing failed septic system that's sitting in the groundwater. So that this is definitely an improvement. I would note that um, there was correspondence to ProLine from DEP that had a number of questions. Um, of, that's why they had not issued uh, a file number yet. So um, I don't have an issue with a conditional approval upon the receipt of a file number and no adverse comments from DEP, but I think Mr. Barabee's gonna have to work with, with Whitney um, to resolve you know, her, her questions, to answer hers before, before we would finally issue the permit. And um, you might want to ask for comments from the audience as well. Is there a comment from the audience on this one? Uh, we happen to be your buggers, and we know what we're doing, what they're doing, and we're in total agreement. Okay, good. Thanks. Do I have your name for the record, please? Sure. Lou Blaze, address four six zero, Captain Circle. Thank you. Mark Blaze, four six zero, Captain Circle. Thank you. Did you have anything else to say on that too? No? It's okay. It's All right. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. So can I have a motion to issue an order of conditions upon uh, receipt of the file number? I have just one quick question. Sure. Was it approximately um, 
what's the distance between the septic system and Stony Brook, which feeds south of the pond? Mm, I don't know. I can give you that give information. Me a, you can give me a call. I can guess 300 feet. 300 feet? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I did also, to add to Mr. Aguiar's comments, I do have a poly barrier also going yep, around, so like a horseshoe, yep. around the system. Yep. Okay. That's a, I'm talking a vertical poly barrier. Correct, yeah. okay. yes. Any other questions, Chris? No. Okay. So can I have a motion to issue a uh, order conditions upon receipt of the file number? Uh, I'll make that motion. So we'll Second. Okay, roll call vote. Aye. Abstain. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next is an order condition and extension and request SE-24-741. Project location is Mount Hope Bay, uh, agenda to 120 Charles Street, filed by Anchor. QEA on behalf of Liberty Utility. Good evening. I'm, I'm Mark Mahoney with Anchor QEA. And Derek Tomka from Liberty Utilities is in the audience. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it's almost three years to the date, and I don't recognize a lot of the names, so I don't know that you have a lot of background in the project. It's a Massachusetts Contingency Plan Sediment Remediation Project that involves the dredging of about 11,000 cubic yards of sediment containing oil and or hazardous materials. So I'm going to use the term OHM. That's the Mass DEP term of art for um, contaminants in the environment. So there are contaminants in the sediment that are a result of a legacy process or a historical process at the site. Uh, coal and oil were gasified, and byproducts from that process, primarily coal tar, which contains a class of contaminants known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, were released into the sediment. And so the idea is to remove that sediment, remove the associated OHM. Uh, in order to do that, there is a matrix of permits that you need to get. One of them is obviously the order of conditions, which was issued on January 7th, 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, also a programmatic general permit from the Corps of Engineers, which we applied for and received. Um, the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act environmental notification form, which again was applied for and received. A joint permit from Massachusetts DEP, that is a Chapter 91 and a 401 water quality certification. That was applied for and has not yet been received. That's been one of the, the things that has kind of hung the project up. And there's a variety of reasons for that. I'll just give you a very brief timeline without boring you all with the details. I was on the Conservation Commission in my town for 25 years, and I know brevet is appreciated. So uh, what happened was um, a combination of factors. Uh, the Massachusetts DEP representative that was reviewing the permit on behalf of the Chapter 91 group uh, tried to schedule a site visit on four different occasions. This was during the pandemic um, in early 2021. And all four times it had to be canceled because a member of the team that was going to present at the site visit or attend the site visit had some contact with someone with COVID. In addition to that, Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries had provided input uh, requesting that a slight modification to the project be made and that mitigation um, be provided by Liberty Utilities to address the, perm the temporary taking of shellfish uh, bearing sediment. And so uh, it, that request from DMF came in in 2020, early 2020, and we just got the mitigation approved in 2022. The project manager for DMF uh, during the course of the development of the mitigation retired and another representative was uh, hired and had to come up to speed and took the project over. 
So about two weeks ago, we got the approval for the mitigation. Liberty Utilities is going to fund work in South Watupa Pond to evaluate water quality. So um, we got that information to DEP, and they're going to be able to move forward with finalizing the Chapter 91. The 401 Water Quality Certification Division, um, they were able to move it through the, and turn it over to Chapter 91. So we just need the Chapter 91 permit. Once we have that, there's one more permit, believe it or not, that we have to get, and that is a Mass Coastal Zone Management uh, Federal Consistency Determination. So they basically review all the permits and make sure that, that they're all uh, the same. It's the same basic project as we had um, presented in the Notice of Intent three years ago. Uh, there is one very slight modification to the project, and that is in the area offshore. It's about 147,000 square feet. Uh, we were going to dredge that area and restore it by placing six inches of clean sand, and the Division of Marine Fisheries asked that the area be restored to grade. The average cut depth, the average depth of removal of sediment in that area is about a foot and a half. So rather than putting six inches of backfill in, we're going to put a foot and a half of backfill on average back into that area to back it up to grade, bring it back up to grade per DMF uh, request. So that's it in a nutshell, um, the reason that we're back looking for an extension. Uh, so a combination of COVID, illness, um, and retirement really has delayed the project to the point where um, we're hoping to go fairly shortly, but that's going to be dependent on when the, the permits are, are finalized. Because the time you do the work is time sensitive to... All right, good point. So, yes, yeah. the, we have a fisheries window that we have to work yeah. within. Okay. Does the board have any questions? No, I just would assume that you need to remove the, you know, the, the water underneath the river just because that, that would be runoff. That was that to be <coughs> um, from the from the site from the original from, site from the sediment? Do you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We will manage the sediment on the pier that's out there. We actually had, uh, I believe, it was Child's Engineering come in and, and take a look at the pier that's out there and make some recommendations for repairing the pier. That's all described yeah, in the notice my, of intent. My question would be, was it dumped there, or did it, was, is it there as a result of runoff, do you think? It's a, it's a result of um, a combination of, of factors. Some runoff, some of it just direct discharges to the water, likely. That was the waste management practice at the time. This, this operated for about 100 years, and it stopped operation. I forget exactly when, but typically these manufactured gas plants stopped operations when the interstate natural gas pipelines came on line back in the 60s and 70s. Okay, thank you. So can I have a motion to grant an extension? So moved. Second. Aye. Oh, one second. Dan? For the maximum three years. For the maximum three years? Okay. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you very much. Next is a request of Correspondence, review, and discussion of draft uh, permit solution statement with conditions for Shell Oil products. I can give you some background on that. So the the number of departments that get these notices, <coughs> we had actually sought out the um, the expertise of a licensed site professional mm -hmm. um, to review um, this this statement and, and this report. That that has been done. Um, he's comfortable with, with what they had proposed. And we had just resolved that as of the 28th of, of November. So you can place it on file, but it, it has been addressed internally through my office, Paul Furlan's office, and the mayor's office as well. Okay. Have a motion to place on file? So <coughs> Open vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, next discussion on 1262 Brighton Ave work. So I can just give you guys a little bit of background. I think you're all somewhat familiar with it because I CC'd you on the letter that we had sent out. Uh, we had gotten a call um, and a complaint with regards to some activities taking place on what was the old Glixman property. I think you're all familiar with that at the bottom of Brayton Avenue where the, the rail trail runs through. Uh, it, to the west of it is the Quickishan River, the extension of it. So there was some clearing activity going on. I went out, I spoke with Mr. Mello. He was very accommodating, stopped doing the work immediately. I asked him to come to the meeting today. He responded to my email after that when I sent the letter that he would be here. 
it's my understanding that he has sought out the expertise of a consultant, wetlands consultant and engineer, uh, to put together uh, a proposal not only for with regards to what has been done or what in what his general intentions are for the use of the property going forward. Um, so it, it has been somewhat of an altered site over time. There has been some vegetation that, that's been removed. Mr. Mello understands to leave things as is until he gets the work permitted. The only thing I would ask is that um, some erosion control barrier be placed along the limits of where this new area has been altered uh, in the location of, you know, the location of the wetlands itself. Other than that, I mean, if Mr. Mello would like to add anything else to it, but he's been more than accommodating, and, and I think he understands the process moving forward now where he possibly did not before. So I just want to apologize if I broke any laws. I didn't know this is my first property, so uh, mm -hmm. Joseph Mello. Um, we're here basically because, you know, we were asked. We're here basically to find out what we have to do in the correct order as far as, as, far as filing permits so I can clean up the back of the property, which is full of trash and debris left from the previous owner, which is mainly what I was doing there. So as long as we can, you guys can let me know what I have to do, I'll get it done and we can move on. Yeah, so I, as we discussed, you know, the quicker your engineer and your wetlands consultant can Correct. put together the notice of intent to get before here, then that's the, the quicker you'll be able to get to, to back working on the site in any capacity. Okay. So. You know, the board can, you know, immediately ask or, or require that uh, that the, you know, some type of erosion control yeah. be, be put Soon, in place sooner than later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you con got uh, contact with the engineer yet, or? Yeah, we're working with Conco engineers and uh, scientists. Yeah, we have. Uh, they're working on the phase one, and then we're actually going to get the phase one, phase two. Um, I did have them give me an email just so they, you know let you guys know that we are working with them um, and we're trying to do the right thing. So okay. Every, everybody's backed up for weeks as far yeah, as, you know. As you well yeah, right. that, that's why it's important to get some erosion control out yeah. there. And we, we did purchase that. If you drive by, you see okay, it. Okay, I did see that on That'll be, well, we, yeah. we just want to make sure that we didn't want to go out there and yeah. install it. We just that's wanted to fine. get the okay from you guys first, so. Okay. Does he have an idea when he's gonna give you an answer on? He said he needs a few weeks. Yeah. So, so January 9th might be suitable for you guys. I'm sure they'll be pushing because they want to get out there and yeah. get some work. Oh, yeah. so I literally don't want to hold you up either. So yeah. yeah, I literally parked the machines where they were. I haven't moved them. If I, can, I do want to they request that I moved. move them yeah. from where they are. Oh, you can move the machines, oh, yeah. No, but, no. I, but I can honestly, I can attest that they have not moved from the position he yeah. left them in on Monday morning, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. 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 Well, we They're actually still We appreciate running. your cooperation. Yeah. With yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's all we yeah. want to do is cooperate. I just, like I said, this is our first property. I have no idea the process, so. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't quite tell. I'm very familiar with the path that goes by the property. Mm -hmm. But did you you all now own the whole the whole thing? The whole Yeah, that's the all and everything? The building and the property out back where the billboard is, that's all one lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what do you plan to do with it? Um, I own a construction and a trucking company and We've outgrown where we are now, so I'm going to use it to park our equipment and work on our equipment. All righty. So uh, we we have a cease and desist order right now. Just not, there is no formal enforcement action. It was just a letter asking them to come here today. So it, okay. as long as the All process right. moves forward, I see no it, right. no reason for so a formal enforcement. Action. If we just make a motion that you install uh, erosion control around the area. Okay. And then no work is to take place. No work is to take place. Area until so, okay. permit's been issued. Yeah. So can I just clarify something? We can work on the bottom half of that property, correct? Define bottom half of the property. Oh, so like where the, the building is. The building to the Brayton Avenue? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I just just yeah. to make sure. Okay. Yeah. In the back. Just let's, let's say from the bottom of the ledge to the wetlands. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if I could add to that, on the Brayton Ave side, yep. the front of the building, yep. there's two swales there that are full of trash. and. Right. And, uh, it floods out our property because our catch basin drainage goes to that swale. We wanted to clean that out and also remove the fence out front because the previous tenant that was there destroyed the fence, so I have no way of locking it up. Yeah. So anybody can go in there at any time. So we purchased concrete blocks that we were going to put a block wall in front instead of a chain link fence so it looks better. But we would like permission to install that so I can lock my equipment up. 
if you want to give me the permission to go out and yeah and look at something uh, reasonable so we'll go out and take a look dan will go out and take a look and okay. but yeah it does i did notice uh the swell was i think even had some uh Shopping grocery carts, carts in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, there's a Walmart car yeah, in there. It's, nice. it's loaded with stuff. So do we need to make a motion to, you know, to authorize? Yeah. To go up? Yep. Okay. So, so we'll make uh, a motion we authorize Dan to go out and work with them to make appropriate changes so that they can proceed with what they can work on at this point in time. Second. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank Give you. me a call. We'll send it on the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Uh, discussion on Bell Rock Road, wetlands violations. So you may all recall, um, this has been a long drawn out process. Back in March, the applicant uh, had put together a scope of work for the restoration of this mined uh, site where all, all of the rock was removed. So remember dating back, this, this process was initiated through the construction of three single family homes and that's what allowed this earthwork to take place. Um, the project had sat for a while, not completed. Then they picked it back up again. There was a restoration plan in place and an original enforcement order that you guys had sent out, I think back in February. Uh, so the consultant and the owner came in, came through with this rather lengthy plan of which areas were to be worked and restored and closed out during certain times of the year. We're getting to the end of what that scope of time was, and you all had some concerns regarding that. We've made multiple site visits mm -hmm. and, and check-ins. So we, we've contacted the owners, and again, they've been very good and, and responsive. I've actually met on site um, with Mr. Giosa and Attorney Zajac last week to go over um, what's happened prior to today's meeting. So they've been very responsive. I thought it was very important that they come and get an idea from the board um, what types of things you wanted to ensure were in this final restoration process. My understanding is the earth removal process is complete. So moving forward, it is only restoration. Um, I had let them know some of the concerns that I had with regards to the final restoration, um, but by all means, I wanted them to come and have the discussion with you. So they will be putting together a notice of intent for the restoration area. So this will no longer be in a response to the enforcement order. The response to the enforcement order is a new notice of intent. Um, it, it gives you the ability to condition things a little bit, uh, a little bit greater, um, and, and holds their feet to the fire, I think, a little bit more. So we'll allow them the ability to do that. But I wanted you guys to have that discussion. Sure. Uh, I'm just looking at a, a photo from March 23rd and then another one from September 10th. Uh, you had quite a bit of wet wetlands. Uh, water uh, in 2010 it's covered what kind of fill did you use or was it from the property that filled in the water or can you tell me about that um, and I'll w with us also is um, <coughs> excuse me John Zajac for, uh, for the for Berkeley Street Limited um, w with us also is the site superintendent Daniel Nunes um, my understanding is that uh, much of the material did come from that we are we are importing material for the restoration of the slopes, uh, but most of the material on the flat surface was just reconfigured from material that was on site. Okay. I understand also that there was a recent concern because some piles of material, brush, stumps were seen on site. That was actually something that someone had dumped on our property. We did remove that. We did not bury that. So okay. um, that was not ours. It was not from the site. We discovered it on our site. We removed it to a disposal site that we also maintain on a different property. It was not. I, I in speaking with Mr. Aguiar, who's been very helpful in uh, in guiding us through addressing your concerns. I, I did let him know also that um, that material was not from the site. We didn't bury anything there. Someone dumped it on our property. We got rid of it. Okay. Is the site gated presently? It is. I understand the gate had been down, but we did restore it. So the erosion control has been. That's been. I haven't been out this in the last couple of weeks, so the erosion control's back up around. Has it been? Yes, it's, it's been reset. Okay, because it was failing. Right. Was yeah. Reset. When we were out there the other week, it was it was up in some spots, but down in a number, and they have gone out there and and restored the rest the uh, silt fence erosion control barrier. Does the board have any questions? Okay. 
Yeah, Sorry. once this land has been restored, what's the intentions with the land? I know there was some talk about donating it or whatever it was, but uh, what's your... We have. I've been in contact with the Audubon Society. We haven't reached any agreement with them yet, but it's one of the options that we're considering for it. We uh, understand that it was permitted for three house lots, given the economic climate that we're heading into. I don't know if that'll be practical, and I also believe that there could be some problems in getting the site to perk. Um, so we are... Donation is certainly something we're still strongly considering, and I have been in contact with the Audubon Society to that end. When was the last contact with the Audubon Society? We um, spoke about this at the last meeting back in February or March, but when was the last time? Yeah, we did exchange some information with them. They they sort of were trying to guide us through, not that we were committed to donating it for sure, but they were sort of guiding us through the donation process and what that would look like from our end. Um, they did reach out to me again recently. I haven't responded to them. That was probably within the past 30 days. Um, but we're still remaining in contact with them, and that is one of the options we're strongly considering. Uh, I strongly support the, you know, the not development with anything but for the as you would with the, with the gift to the Audubon. If that doesn't work, if something happens, there are other groups, uh, other possibilities, trustees, other things. Um, um, please let us know how we can help. That's really what I'm saying most of all. Is, it's just, the board has expressed their, their desire to keep this as part of the bioreserve rather than an isolated development in the middle of the bioreserve, and then, which would um, there are different estimates as to how far the damage goes when you, if you put a, if, let's say you, for example, took, took a hunk of land and put three single family houses on it and then uh, land around it, yards, that's a substantial damage to, to a bioreserve. So I hope that I hope it can work out on a donation or a purchase or something. I think my concern, and it may be shared by the other members of the commission, is just what type of fill is being done. So, yeah. yeah, Fall River is yeah. historically a place where people would bring contaminated fill uh, to sites. So we just want to be sure that it's clean fill. Um, that you know, you're, you're, obviously there's some standing water. You're operating probably below the water table at that at that particular spot. So we're pretty concerned with what's being brought on site. I think that's the concern. It it, it is sandy, a silty sandy fill, okay. clean mm -hmm. silty sandy fill. Where is it coming from? From Raynham, a location in Raynham. Okay. When we when we crush stone and make gravel, it's the silt sand that comes out of it. Once it's dried, we haul it. Okay. You know, so it's it's virgin material that's just been washed. That's all. And there's no alternative use for that, from your perspective. Yeah, there's, there's use for you know yards, grading yards, you know shimming up yards and then looming over it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the rock that came out was worth far more than the dirt that's it's coming back, back in. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so it's in that game. <laughs> Waste not one. Now, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if, if I could, um, when we talked about some of the restoration, some of the items that the commission should consider is because of the elevation difference with how the site sits now from where it was previously, um, it should be understood that the site be brought back to an elevation that directs stormwater to the adjacent wetlands to either side of the property, not to Bell Rock Road, and that a depression cannot be left on the site. So it's going to have to be filled to an elevation that allows that direction to happen. And I explained that to, uh, to the engineer and the, and the attorney at the same time. Um, we would also require, I one of them was that the gate be reconstructed, mm -hmm. which was great. Thanks for putting that back up because um, you don't want to create another issue for yourself. Um, the board should consider some type of site certification um, either by the engineering firm or an affidavit, something regarding the imported material, whether a series of test pits are done, now, silty sand is, is an appropriate fill, but contaminated silty sand is not. So you, you can have pure gravel that's full of oil. So there, there should be some type of certification that the commission requests either of the owner through some type of affidavit or understanding that they have not placed any fill. I mean, once the owner, 
you know, goes by the wayside. I don't know the potential liability that they would have if they were to go defunct, probably none, because um, I'm sure this is the only entity that, that this Bell Rock Road LLC uh, has ownership in. Um, or you could require that there be something done by the consulting firm to do random test pits through the area that's been filled with where the water was, filled with, with new material, to your satisfaction, whatever that may be. I, I don't know. but. You, you sh I know you've all voiced concern about the fill material coming in. Um, so you, you have the ability to ask for whatever level of protection and comfort you all want. You don't want to find out 10 years from now that, that we have an issue out there and it's something that you didn't address today. Dan, how many test pits would be required out there? I mean, I, I would think if you did, I mean, it's really the low-lying area. So if you were to do a grid of 100 or 150 f feet of a grid. Mm -hmm. So whatever that comes out to be, the side slopes, I mean, it's it's, it's done. Yeah. It, it's pretty much done, and they've done a wonderful job on it. So yeah. this is really more about the material that, that's been, you know, entered into groundwater, like, like we stated before. So um, I think a grid of 100 or 150 square, um, some test pits, you know. Yeah, I know, I we, think that we, we can witness them as well. I would yeah. also. And we have, I mean, do we have any idea how long that gate um, was in, was open and somebody else had access to it and was dumping whatever they were dumping in there. Do you have a, a time frame or an idea of how many? Well, if they were dumping, we would have seen it. Cause well, there was definitely stumps there and everything else, correct? Yeah, yeah, but nobody, we would, I would have noticed if it was something different than our material, just like that brush that was in the middle. Okay. So no that's sense. why we removed it. The, the gate was probably down for six months, maybe, but it's, it's that's back up. Well, that, that just doesn't make sense from what was just stated, that, that the material, would, the, the organic material was dumped on the property. So yeah. we, we just heard that, that that was stated to us, that, the, that it was illegal dumping on the property, but you just said there was no illegal dumping. No, no, I'm saying that we didn't do any illegal dumping. Somebody oh. else did. Oh, okay. we, we, yeah, when you. we went back in, I brought a machine in, we loaded that material out, and we brought in more salty sand, okay. salty fill. I think my concern is if it's been open for six months like that, we have no idea really of how much contaminants or soil has been in there by, that was dumped by somebody else. And I think to Dan's point about testing it, no. I think that's where I would go. Yeah. All righty. No. A question. Would the owner uh, or operator have any manifest or documentation from Gravia that it comes from? Is there any such? Well, it's from their own yard. It, right. From their own yard, yeah. yeah. So there should be a bill of lading for every truck that comes in, correct? It should be, yes. Yeah. We have slips on right. it, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So at least we could, we, you know, we process the material in our own yard, but um, we could certainly show how much material has been imported, just okay. to give you an idea. So I think if you file a notice of intent, you know, include that information mm -hmm. um, as you know as conditions of some notes that are on the plan for what will take place. Deal with you know the final loaming and seeding. Um, I mean, it Which, by the way, the work that's been done is very well done. Done well, yeah. done very well. We want to acknowledge that. It's just obviously we have concerns. It's a remote area. Anyone has access to it? It's part of the bike reserve. Right. Right. You know, I don't, can't remember when I just walked, went in and walked around. But the site, I mean, it, it, it's clean, it's well kept. Yeah, no, there's, um, so there's no issues, you know, no dumping there that, that you can see or anything like that. It's just we want to be sure that going forward things are done correctly. But fortunately, there, there is a lot of dumping. There is an occasional happening of severe dumping in isolated places in the bioreserve, and you've got one of them. Thank goodness it wasn't anything, anything worse. Yeah. Well, there could be three oil tanks in the bottom of the, <laughs> the bottom of the hole that was there. You don't know. <laughs> I, I, I could just say I came in there one time. There was some household debris. I called the Fall River Police Department. They come down, took pictures, and we brought a container in and removed that, like a six wheel or somebody did a clean out or something. Yeah, that right? happens. And we removed that, but. We're, we're not burying anything, you know, hazardous, illegal, anything like that. Okay. Right. 
So again, you don't have to make any final decisions tonight. When they come in with the notice of intent, you have the ability at that point in time to place whatever conditions you want. So, yeah. And obviously, we would like a little bit more time to prepare the notice of intent because I think we only sure. had till Wednesday. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, our, uh, we want to see. So. Sure. Of course. Time, so. Yeah. All righty. So, what's the board's wish? I mean, table. Table to January 9th? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're shooting for the January. No, not the January meeting. The February meeting. Probably. Okay. Again, what, what I think we'll do is we'll present to you a plan. I think one of the items that Mr. Aguia pointed out was to make sure you have a comfort level that when the final grading is achieved that the water goes where you want it to go, that it's going to continue to feed the down gradient wetland system in a controlled fashion. So we'll come in with a plan that shows a, a final grading scheme for the property. We'll also, I think, have to show you the limits of what has been done to date so you have an idea of the limit of work and that'll be depicted on any documents we submit um, with any of this additional information and, and the final stabilization plan for the property uh, as well. So that's going to take a little bit of time to, to get that information together. I, I don't anticipate being able to make it for the January meeting. Um, I'll still be working in February, Dan, don't worry. I'm parenting. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> close. <laughs> Mr. Giosa will be retiring soon. Yes. Good for you. Yes, end of February, so I'll, I'll be able to see you at least one more time, maybe two. <laughs> Allison, Allison will be here in March. If she's not <laughs> exactly. February <laughs> so. 6th. So can I have a motion to table to February 6th? Motion so made. Second. Roll call. Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all you very all. much. You guys have Thanks. a nice holiday. You, you too. too. Thank you. Uh, next is discussion of bylaws. Uh, does anybody have any appetite to dig into this at all tonight, or has anybody yeah, done anything? I, or? I have not made. Okay, so yeah, that's I fine. To dig into uh, some of the materials that was handed out last oh, meeting. I haven't had an opportunity right. to. Okay. I don't have an issue with it being right. tabled. I mean, this is this is your baby. So. Meeting. Yeah. Can I have a motion to table? So moved. Second. Roll call. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion for approval of minutes from November 7th, 2022? So moved. Second. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, no citizen input. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. And you guys have a Merry Christmas and a yeah, Happy Merry Holidays. Likewise. Yeah.